Welcome to the Free Flowing Health Podcast, where we invite you to embark on a transformative journey towards a healthier, happier, more fulfilling life. Each episode brings you a dynamic exploration of the diverse aspects of health, wellness, and healing. I'm your host, Lisa Brown. Join me as I engage in intimate conversations with inspirational guests who share their unique stories and insights. These conversations will take you beyond conventional thinking, encouraging you to break free from the constraints of a one-size-fits-all healing approach. Our mission is to empower you with the knowledge, tools, and motivation needed to inspire real change. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Welcome back to another episode of the Free Flowing Health Podcast. This is going to be our second menage a trois. Uh, Last night we had an in-person live recorded episode with a friend uh, here at the house studio. And today we have Henry DV tuning in from Dallas, originally from South Africa, and my partner, Joe Boris, who will be an occasional co-host on the show just to shake things up a bit. So Henry's going to enlighten us and talk to us about his journey, you know, coming from South Africa, also his experience uh, with a traumatic brain injury at five years old, uh, talk a little bit about some of the struggles and challenges without going into too much detail about some things that he experienced and then how he eventually came to experience obstacle racing and how that has changed his life. He's then going to talk about all of the amazing organizations that he is a part of and that he supports and how he's helping other people who have experienced various traumas in their life overcome, overcome, you know, whatever it is they're dealing with so they can live peacefully and challenge themselves in ways that help them basically move towards the light and out of the darkness. So Henry, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, guys. So where do we begin, guys? I can tell you all a little bit about my, I mean, my past. Uh, I was born and raised in Griqua Town, South Africa, which is a little bitty town in South Africa, very rural. Um, left there for 21 years, 22 years of my life. And went to school to be an uh, IT professional. But I always had a passion for farming. So got a worker's visa, came over here, and my whole journey in the state started started there. I'm a U.S. citizen now, and I love living here in Texas. It's my favorite place, and also Florida. This is the first time this past uh, December was in Florida, and I love Florida now, too. So, And that's how we met. We met recently, just so the audience uh, can get a, a clear view and picture of how we're connected, is Joe and I and yourself, we're Spartan ambassadors. We met uh, wrangling up some swamp puppies in Central Florida. I, I've never heard that terminology, swamp puppies, until I think it was you or Carlos, you know, uh, stated that term out loud. I'm like, what the heck is that? Especially coming from New York. So we met recently. We thought you were a cool dude. You have a, you know, a deep, profound story, lots of insights to share. So it's going to be a great conversation and we'll we'll dive deep into it. So just to kick it off, uh, can you just tell us a little bit about what happened when you were five years old and how that affects how now you relate to the world? So when I was five, I was at a cousin's farm and he had a Jeep sitting there. And, you know, what either five-year-olds do is climb all over stuff. I was on top of the roll bar, uh, fell backwards uh, on the tailgate of the Jeep. I hit my head and I embedded two bolts, essentially, in my head. Um, being since in rural Africa, and I'm also like a Gen X, you know, kind of growing up where you just shake it off. Uh, there was no doctors around, so I acted fine. There was no bleeding or anything. My parents, you know, they took care of me. And uh, years later, I started noticing a difference in how I perceive things. So essentially, now that I'm older, I figured out is uh, I lost the ability to understand emotions. Um, I'll feel something, but I don't know what it is. The only emotion that's real to me is, is rage. Um, and that's a, it's a very strong emotion. So that's probably why it's the only one I figured out. Um, and that really has given me a perspective into people that have suffered trauma. And uh, not just trauma, but people in general. I can read somebody in 30 seconds. Because I don't look at them 
through emotional perspective. I look at them as what they are and what they show me and what I, what I perceive them. Um, and that's how I connect with people. Uh, I have countless people that has gone through so much trauma in their life and they try to put a face on and, and you know, not show the world that they had trauma in their life. And I can see that. I can feel it. Um, and, it and it's weird for me, but, but that also is, I always call it my curse because I don't have any, any friends because I can see people for who they are. But it's also a blessing because I can help people. And, you know, fast forward, I've gone through my own struggles in life. Um, I had some issues growing up and at one point in my life, I figured out what I need to be doing. I need to be there for people that is going through hard stuff, uh, that has issues, somebody to talk to, somebody to go and chat to. Because that, that's my main deal is I, I will listen to anybody's story. I won't give you advice, but I will listen to you and I won't judge you. So, I mean, to me, it is a blessing also, not just a curse. So a little bit of a, a blessing and sometimes I'm sure a burden at times as well. Um, so do you want to talk just a little bit about before we fast forward to current day, just touch on some of the struggles that you endured, uh, you know, throughout your life before you, um, you know, found your, found the obstacle racing and the organizations that you work with so closely? Uh, I did. I, uh, I don't know how to word this, but I had a problem that I had to take care of myself. Uh, it was caused by a very narcissistic person in my past. Um, and that kind of pushed me in a direction that I went spiraling down, down here for a while. And I luckily rebounded from it. Um, and that also kind of helped me understand what my purpose is in life to help people that has traumas and especially abusive relationships. Um, that is something that, that is very dear because I've experienced that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's about it. Okay, so how long ago did you uh, make your way over here to the States? Uh, it would be, I came here in 2004. Uh, I worked on and off on farms, you know, go back and forth. Uh, I met my wife and became a U.S. citizen in 2016. So I've been a U.S. citizen now from 20, since 2016. Uh, can I ask you what, how old were you when you came over? I was 24 years old. Okay. So like 10 years ago? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, not 10 years ago. <laughs> Okay. And, uh, after you or, or, uh, th I guess, I mean, farming is pretty tough work. So, and it can also be really therapeutic. Did you find yourself using that to, to help navigate through some of the, some of the things that you were struggling through? Yes, absolutely. Uh, my currently I'm working for a very large dairy. I'm an operations manager on the farming side. Um, so I am out of my truck a lot. That's why I'm sitting in my truck right now. Um, so I enjoy the solitude because that's how I recharge myself is having solitude. And uh, people always call me, uh, oh, I feel like a lone wolf. I'm very social, but there's times where I just need to be, go find a, a mountain stream and go fish and just have fun. So. I relate that. It, it, it really is farming. That's yes, really a good yeah. for me to recharge. You know, I'm a super introvert, and I I need that isolation and that time to reflect and recharge and clear my energy field. So, totally understand that aspect of uh, you know just being out there in the world. Um, prior to you know stumbling across OCR, did you you were a little overweight, right? I think I was looking a little I was, bit. I can share pictures. I mean, I was uh, at my heaviest. I was close to 300 pounds. I'm okay, 6'3". So, so were there hit so, health issues related to, um, you know, having that excess weight? Or was it just you were overweight? Like, what was your mental state at that time? So, uh, 
me is just because of the jobs I did. I used to be a service mechanic that was on the field, you know, on the mm -hmm. road a lot. So you work 18 hours a day. So the only places that's open is Denny's and McDonald's and, and you know, all the junk that you're not supposed to eat. And driving, you want to drink something. So you get you a big old giant Coke and you drink a Coke the whole time. Because um, we don't have time for water around here, you know. It, it has to taste better. But so I gained a lot of weight doing that. Uh, so 300, almost 300 pounds. I was, uh, when I started my process, I was roughly around 285. Um, that this all started in 2022 when I changed my job and I finally had room to breathe where I wasn't on the road all the time. I could focus on my diet and I just got tired of it. Waking up every morning hurt because all my joints started. I had to get uh, knee surgery on my right knee because of I'm sure of my weight. Um, and I just decided this is it. I'm, I'm not going, I'm not going to be this bad. And I was playing around on YouTube one night and I saw Spartan race. I said, ah. you know what? If I can lose, if I can lose all this weight, I can put that as a goal to prove to myself that I made it. So I lost almost a hundred pounds in seven months. Amazing. I wow. That's incredible. Just put my head down and I started working on it. I, tried to eat right, which was probably still not the right way of dieting because I lost it so fast. And I lost all that weight and I got connected with uh, Dan McDonald, which is the chief of staff of Spartan, um, through the OCR 101 call, which was, you know, they sent you the email and said, hey, you can join this OCR 101 call and that'll show you anything. And, you know, I'm, I always like to learn about stuff. So I joined the call and I did my first call probably in November of uh, 22. It might have been earlier, September, November. And it was then it was still a, a weekly call. So and then I said, well, these guys are going through a lot of trouble putting on these calls. So I just kept going and kept going and, you know, kind of became part of it. So. I finally did my first race last year in Vegas. That was my very first deal. I wasn't going to sign up for anything. So I signed up for a sprint, a 5K. Uh, I ran it and lo and behold, I don't know how it happened, but I was in the top, you know, 30%. So that kind of gave really me a little good. bit of more motivation. Um, so, you know, and, and it just went downhill from there. So nice. It's awesome. Um, you said that you were probably not dieting right to lose that weight. What, what do you mean? Like what, what was your, what was your dietary approach? You did something right. Yeah. You're right. So I tried macros, uh, macros, unfortunately does not work for me. It actually makes me gain weight. Okay. When you say macros, um, we, you know, your calorie counting, you have to have so many fats, so many calories and so many, uh, Protein, so carbohydrates, protein. and well, fats. carbohydrates, yeah. Right. So what I essentially did is I took my basal, my, my maintenance calories. I dropped it with 500. So mm -hmm. I ate 500 calories less than what my maintenance calories should be. And then like all the exercise, I did not factor that in at all. So I was mm -hmm. essentially probably starving myself. Mm -hmm. And was losing a lot of muscle mass doing that. Oh, so see. that's why I okay. said it's probably yeah. not the right way to do it. Okay. So let's just define what a Spartan race is. I realize there might be people listening to this episode or watching us and they're like, what the hell is an obstacle race? What is a Spartan race? We so, get asked that all the time. So yeah, yeah. Would so you do us the honor <laughs> of explaining. Yeah, let's explain it oh, to yeah. the, 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 no, uh, the novices out there that might be interested. I'm going to say the most cliche, uh, cliche thing, probably. It is a race that you go in alone and you come out with a bunch of friends. Uh, it is also a race that will change your life, um, as it did for me. So, uh, Spartan races, we have, you know, several distances. You have a five, a 10 and a 21 K. And then you have the 30 K. Um, and all it is is over a course of that 
uh, whatever distance you pick, you have different obstacles. You can be a professional and try run it as fast as you can, or you can just have fun and, and go enjoy the people that's on course with you. And, and, and honestly, I love it because that's how I met most of the people I interact with was on course. Because there it's, it's kind of like you are naked is probably the, the wrong word, but <laughs> you are your, your, your guards and your, your boundaries, everything is down. Because you're so focused Horrible. on doing these obstacles. Yeah. So, I mean, it's therapy to me. You get all that stuff out. So, I mean, that's a Spartan race to me. I, I know some people would say, yeah, you get it. But that's, that's what I see as Spartan race. All right. So you come across it on YouTube. You decide to do your first race. You finish in the top 30th percent. You're already making dietary changes. And now you're starting to lose the physical weight. How do you get to the point where you're so involved in Spartan as an ambassador? And then how do you connect with these organizations? Like, how does it go from, I'm this guy that knows nothing about this and just seeing an ad on YouTube. And then like now today, this is pretty much a huge part of your life. Yeah. So, so on the OCR 101 call, they have X, SGX coats, which is a Spartan group coach. Um, and his name is Christian Bezzotto. He's also there in Florida. He's a real good guy on Instagram. If you want to follow him, uh, you know, just a good person, good human by himself. So I dealt with him and then Dan and Vince, uh, Vince Atalo is, is another person, uh, puts on the, the OCR 101 calls. And I mean, it's stuff. Um, and then me and Dan started talking and became more and more friends. So I uh, did another race then in, in Colorado in June and saw a group called Oscar Mike, which they take veterans out, you know, amputees, people with PTSD, uh, people that, you know, might be blinded, and they take them through the course. Um, and that kind of, you know, I know he talked about uh, Oscar Mike before, so I started asking, I said, hey, Dan, is there a way I can get in with some of these organizations, you know, as far as helping them, volunteering to them? Um, and he said, uh, yeah, he'll get me in touch. So he got me in touch with Joey McLamory, which is the director, one of the race directors of More Hearts and Scars, which made, is something that fit right into my narrative. So I signed up for the Dallas Beast and I assisted him on a wheelchair pulling somebody through one of these courses and uh that day was a very challenging beast it was a 21k through a canyon with a wheelchair it was also 100 degrees Yikes. and no wind and you know just the group we were around how far we were helping each other the conversations we had to keep each other motivated is what cemented me with that organization because I knew I felt like this is where I need to be. This felt like home to me. And I could help people. So, and then the next day, we were just doing the fun, the, the, the 10K and the 5K for the fun. You know, just as, as the team, you know, we ran through and we got to cargo net, which is this vertical net where you climb over. And this girl, uh, was stuck on and she was like frozen solid on uh. and I mean to the point where she had tears in her eyes so me and Joey you know walked over there and tried to help her get her down get her calmed down and she was going to give up she wasn't going to go over it and I said no you are going to get over it we are going to help you over this dog on it mm. and that was my aha moment Helping that girl over it. So I, I, I let her climb and I hung behind her, supporting her and told her, can you get tired, lean back against me and rest? And we got her over that. And the joy and tears that was in her eyes mm -hmm. melted my unemotional black heart. <laughs> and wow, that's, that's awesome. That is where. Yeah. That is where I realize this is what I need to do. 
not worry about the race, not worry about getting a medal. I need to be on that horse to help people that feel like they can't do it and show them they can do it. Because that's I what we are here that. for. Mm -hmm. you know, we as humans need to support each other. And, and that's something that society is going away from. We, 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 try, we, we don't help each other anymore. You know, if there's somebody laying dead on his, or not dead, but somebody laying down on the street, most people drive by them. They won't stop and see, hey, are you okay? Do you need something? You know, check on people. And to me, that's how I feel. Is, you know, on the, on the Spartan races, I want to be that guy that helps somebody overcome them. Because I bet you that would make a bigger impact on somebody that thought they couldn't do it and they realized they could to come back. And that's also what I told that girl afterwards is I want you to promise me that next year Dallas you will be here and you will try this again. And I promise you I will be here and I will help you. So. And that's what I love about the Spartan community having only been introduced to it a couple of years ago and having all of these uh, reservations about even participating like most people that we meet who make excuses or they're just fearful and I'm not fit enough and I'm not ready and I have to train. And I really always try to explain that it's not about that, that there's all different body types. There's disabled people, there's veterans. And when the community comes together, we're here to lift each other up and support one another to get through the obstacle race. It's not about the accolades. It's not about finishing first. It's not being, you know, about being able to bench a certain amount so that you're strong enough and ready enough. It's about just challenging yourself on a deeper level to be a better version of you that when you're out there on the course, knowing that you will not be left behind, no man left behind. So Spartan race is so deep in that way. It's so much more than just an obstacle race. And that's why I fell in love with it as well. You know, especially somebody who has experienced a lot of traumas and is still working through a lot of uh, things that ha have happened in my past. I feel like with every single Spartan race, I get a little stronger, I get a little more confident, and it just, you know, gives me a vision of what life can be every time I cross that finish race. And it doesn't matter if I fall off the monkey bars and almost break my back or go stumbling on the path and land into a dead tree like last time, knowing that, you know, it's just me against me, but at the same time, there's others around me to support me if need be and vice versa. So when we shift from that me consciousness to we, then we find that ultimate union and that ability to work together as a whole. And that's why I enjoy Spartan racing and I'm a huge advocate of it. And I'm sure that Joe, you probably have a similar story if you wanna share you know, how you found Spartan and what it has done for your life and how it impacted your journey. Yeah. I. I uh started much like much like Henry's story. I, I was overweight and got to a point where I needed to make a change. I decided that I was going to make a change and uh, lose weight. My my glucose was too high and I was running in pre, into pre-diabetes, running in the pre-diabetes level. And the doctor, because of my cystic fibrosis, says, you know, we, we may just put you on insulin to take care of this just before anything else happens. And I was like, nah, doc, I'm not going to just start taking insulin every day. Um, because I knew that I hadn't given it a real shot to actually let my body fix itself. So I did, I, I gave it that chance. I changed and I did start like we talked about earlier with the macros. Um, I had set it to where I just wasn't taking in so much, um, carbohydrates and trying to restore those the, the glucose numbers i still had i definitely made sure i had enough protein and ate a lot of protein and um i was lifting weights now at that point because i've been playing tennis several times a week and i try to tell people a lot that that doesn't really do it like you can be a tennis player and play three times a week four times a week but that doesn't necessarily mean that you are in shape or that you're healthy that that's going to take care of or correct your dietary selections, because this is still, you're, you're, it doesn't, it just doesn't work that way. You need to, you need to be a little more conscious about what you're putting in, not just what you're doing on the outside. So I, I started, I started lifting and changed the diet. My body composition started changing. And most importantly, my glucose came down. I got out of that pre-diabetic level. 
then a friend of mine asked me to join a 5k run a 5k with them and i don't really like running um at that point i certainly didn't i never really did as a as a younger as a kid but i do remember as a kid i would run and just make sure that i didn't stop and i people might pass me but i didn't want them i didn't want anybody to see me walking so i'll just keep <laughs> on running i'll just keep on running fight through it fight through it so finally, after a couple of races went by, I went and joined him on the 5K and ended up finishing top five, fifth in my age group. And just like you said, I was like, wow, I barely trained for this, and but I still did pretty well. And now I want to do better. So now I'm going to start running more often. Still with that thought that this isn't my favorite sport. This isn't my favorite activity. I love lifting weights. I love playing tennis. I love sports and agility and that kind of thing. And it wasn't until I heard, uh, I started listening to podcasts with, I heard Jocko Wilnick and um, several other um, Navy SEALs, David Goggins, of course, and people that had gone through this combat training and physical training and done similar type of courses, finally hearing Joe DeSena talk about Spartan Race. I, and I thought, well, that's it. That's what I think I can start to combine this run and lifting and obstacles lifestyle into something that's going to draw me out every every few months to to give it my best and to put all of the training towards something. Now, that's good for as long as it's going to last. I don't know how long that's going to last, how long I'm going to how long we're going to be involved with Spartan and running Spartan races. I'm sure at some point in our future, whether it's a year, five years, 10 years, we're going to move on to something else and maintaining that at that physical physical training in our lives is going to be important to make sure that we're staying healthy. But for now, it's got me hooked. You know, I ran my first race and as soon as I finished, it was a 5K, it was a city race. I'm, I'm, I'm actually wearing the shirt they gave me for that race. And as soon as I crossed the finish line, I was like, it's it, it's over. Where's the, yeah. like, I thought it was going to be, I thought I need, I, I had trained for so much more. and was ready for so much more. So I knew right then it's like, yeah, I've got to do a whole bunch more of these. I'm going to go for mm -hmm. longer distances, get that trifecta, get that beast. And it was, it was when we met that I ran that beast the day before, right? Mm -hmm. that, that was the weekend. Or no, I think that was a year before actually I did that beast in, in central Florida. I didn't do it the year we met, but yeah. So, yeah, I guess we all have a story. And the, I guess the takeaway is that, you know, if you just give it a try and you have the courage that it can positively impact your life. So I would like to hear about more specifically, Henry, like when you dove, you know, deep into this and you started obviously joining the organizations. But what specific, uh, you know, what specific positive benefits did you see in your life when you started to, like, dive deep down this rabbit hole? I became a happier person. Because, I mean, that's part of not feeling emotions is you don't feel like you belong. You don't feel like uh, it's hard to explain it. I mean, I want to be a loving, caring person, but I, I lack that capability. I mean, I can tell anybody I love them, but do I really mean it? it could, you know, it's always that overthinking in your mind. You know, do you really mean it? Is this really what it is? So, I mean, to me, it, I became a happier person. That, that makes it easier on me. I've, I've changed my attitude as far as not being grumpy all the time because I'm <laughs> a 42-year-old grumpy man. Yes. <laughs> That's hilarious. And, and how I, I handle people. You know, I'm, I, I, I'm probably more approachable now than I used to be. Um, so, I mean, that even changed my life. And like Joe said, this, I'm, I'm in that point where I'm pushing myself more and more and more. Um, You're a big you teddy know, bear. Like Who are you kidding? You're a big giant no, teddy bear. No, I'm a big bear. teddy bear. But, <laughs> but I mean, I try to be nice to people. And, 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 and that's what, what I love about this. Is you all met me during when I was already well into this transition. And you two made a big impression on me. <laughs> I mean, out of everybody that was there, you two stood out to me. And that's why I try to keep contact with you. Well, I'm so. glad you did. And I'm glad that we're able to have this conversation and even get to know each other a, a little bit more deeply. 
And you're, you're a beast now because I see your videos. I don't spend too much time on Instagram, but when I, when I see your videos doing burpees in the middle of a snowstorm and all this crazy stuff. So can you talk about how that like feeds your soul and what kind of training you do? And just like, you know, Joe DeSena talks about, and that's my man because we're both from Queens and have a similar backstory. But um, like, how does that feed your soul? And, you know, what do you hope by putting this out there? How do you hope to inspire others, I guess, to challenge them beyond their self-imposed limitations? Because, again, a lot of times people have these uh, negative thought patterns or they're stuck in a story and they make all the excuses in the world not to be healthier, not to eat healthier, not to train harder, not to love more, not to be of service. So I think it's all about waking and shaking people up to their core so they see there's more to life and to set them on a unique journey so that they can align with the higher purpose, but also be of service. So I know that was a long winded question, but ultimately, <laughs> you know, just like the training that you do now, can you speak a little bit about it and how you hope to inspire others to move their bodies? And yeah, well, you kind of explained that <laughs> in your question. So, uh, Joe, what Joe always says is, uh, and it's something that, that hit me pretty hard is, if you can find one excuse not to do something, you have to do it. So, I mean, all this crazy stuff I'm doing is for death race, preparing myself for death race. So I, I put myself outside in the elements for that reason, to get used to it. So, but, but it's also like if I'm out in the rain or out in the blizzard or out in the snow or out in the sandstorm for that matter, if I can find the excuse not to do burpees out there, I have to do it. Yeah. yeah. So, so that that that's where all of that come from. Is I have to do something. If I decide that I'm going to try it, I have to do it, no matter if if there's an excuse or not. I I can't back out of it. And that that has really changed my mentality. So I'm not stuck in my head because we as humans are capable of so much, and people need to realize that is we all are superhuman. It's all that's in your mind and in your heart. That is the two things that would stop you from doing something or encourage you to, to do something. Hello, and my name is human. No, I'm just kidding. Let me stop. No one's exactly. Gonna know <laughs> yeah, there, there comes that aha awakening moment where you're down on your knees and face to face with your God, your creator, your source where you have to like just shift your mindset and say, hey, you know, I'm here to do and achieve and accomplish and help so much more than I'm doing now. Yeah. Um, can you just define what the death race is? Again, for the audience members listening and they hear death race, like, oh my God, what is that? So the death race is the extreme endurance that Spartan puts on or that Joe has on his farm in Pittsfield, Vermont. It is anything from... 48 hours to 72 hours, depending on how they feel. Um, so, and you do a lot of burpees. You do a lot of mental challenges while you're so sleep deprived. And really what it boils down to, it shows you that no matter what you, your surroundings is, you can survive. So it's, it's doing hard stuff that makes us realize, that rewires our brains that makes us realize is we can do anything we put our minds to. So no, what, uh, no matter what you've been through in your life, right? No matter what traumas, yeah. what experiences, what hard stuff, this almost is like a preventative measure, you know, can serve as a source of healing for whatever happened to, you know, help us through, but also to set up ourselves for the future incidences because we do live in life and challenges are going to occur. And hardship is yeah. just a part of human existence. So doing hard shit, as Joe DeSana would say, helps us to build grit and resistance so that we can handle the challenges that life throws our way. Everything, yeah, exactly. And, and, and that's something I have noticed is the amount of people that does obstacle racing in a general are people that survive some form of trauma. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason they're doing it. I mean, so for instance, you take a, somebody that's out of an abusive, narcissistic, relationship that is getting gaslighted every day making them feel like they're not worth anything they can't do anything they can't accomplish anything you put that same person through a, Sp a spartan race the moment they jump over that fire and get that medal that's when they realize 
I'm not that person that I was told I'd be. And they realize they're their own person. They are more than what they think they are. Right. That that almost answers one of the questions that I had for you, which was, what is it about doing one of these obstacle course races that changes somebody's feeling of themselves, vision of themselves, ver- that changes the version of themselves in general? I mean, I mean yeah, that 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 really ties into what I was trying to say is, yeah, I mean, it we we realize that we can do anything. Yeah, it might be. You know, and, and that's the problem is too, is people always want to compare traumas. How I perceive a trauma, how anybody else perceive a trauma, that's their trauma. So the same with if they want to cross that finish line. When they do that, they, they'll realize, man, I, I can do this. I can live life. I don't have to listen to people that tells me I'm ugly or fat or, I'm, you know, not fit. And I can go out and I can be more than I'm supposed to be. Because that's the ultimate goal for everybody. We need to be more than we are supposed to be. That's how you have to live every life. It's just my view, but I believe in people. That's why I try to encourage people to be more and to, to show them, hey, it's easy. You just have to get out of your head, have the heart, and just go for it. If you fail, you stand up and you do it again. Don't yeah. ever give up. Don't ever quit. You have to make a decision. You have to make a decision to do that, to do better, to pick, to, to get yourself up, pick yourself up. Sometimes it does require reaching out for help, asking for help to, to help pull you out of that spot. But if you make that decision yeah. to get better, to help yourself or to get help for yourself, and then you commit to it and start doing it. Those are the two of the things that I always tell people. First, you have to you have to realize that they're the where you are or what's happened and make a decision to make a change. And once you've made that decision that you're going to do it, commit to it and get and take your first step. That first step, once you make that commitment and decision, will lead to your second step, your third step, and every step thereafter. It's it's very strong, powerful mindset that you create and push yourself through or latch on and help have let somebody else help you out if you need it but it's important very important well speaking about help that just leads me to i know we're gonna run out of time soon but you know you're running uh so many races you're running with people who are disabled like you mentioned veterans people just stuck on the course that you know you just met for the first time you're helping them over the cargo net is there any particular incident or any particular person and you don't have to go into like their name or the details that really stood out like their story or, you know, it was just incredible that they were able to complete the course and that you got to witness, bear witness to the completion. You know, I'm I'm curious about two people, one, the person in the wheelchair that you guys took through that beast and two, that, that girl that you helped over the cargo net, did you see her the next year or has that year come up yet? No, that, that year is coming up, but she is definitely my number one. Okay. Uh, um, and I'm hoping to see her in Dallas because I did make a promise that she's going to yeah. be in Dallas. Um, the person I took through is Julie Adelman. She's a veteran too. Um, she she can walk, but it's very hard. I mean, she has so many health issues that, that stops her from, from walking. So uh, the VA got her a grid chair that we can use. And Julie was the one we took through the beast in Dallas. And that's how we... We born it, and she's she's from Florida. She's part of the VA program in Florida. Um, the other person that stands out to me is Sean Gibbons, the guy that I took uh, that Sunday with the VA wave. Uh, I was on his chair. He's yeah. a competitive CrossFitter. Uh, you know, being a paraplegic and a competitive CrossFitter. So th- that was my, I loved it because we were running and we were pushing. It. It was it was fun, and he showed me so much. Is don't ever give up either. I mean, he did all the obstacles. He joked about it. He loved it, and just the joy in his face too when we got done. That was, I mean, to me, that was more than enough. And this so, just like shows then, uh, that sorry that obstacle races are for go. anyone, anyone, no matter what you've been through in your life, no matter what 
um, you know, this advantages you have, this abilities you have that like, this is just an example that anyone can do this and accomplish it with the support of the community. And to me, you know, I can think to myself what it would feel like being in a wheelchair, being stared at the whole time, being, you know, not mm -hmm. treated like a normal person. And essentially what, what we try to achieve through that is treat them like a normal person. They do the obstacles with us. I mean, yes, we help them, but they still do majority of the work. I mean, poor Sean, we, there was a time where we had to really book it and he was, I mean, he was rolling with it. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it really just, it, stuff like that really makes me happy to see that. And it makes me feel accomplished when we do it. Uh, we had, uh, well, Stuffer's mother in, in Dallas, Orton, Granbury, too. This past year, we took Marla through there. Um, she went with a goal of 15 miles. We gave her 30 miles. Wow. Because wow. it's the, it's the same. Uh, she had real bad arthritis. And, I mean, she can't walk much. But that was, her goal was, you know, to, to get that up. And we did everything to give her that up. And, just the joy in her face too afterwards um i'll have to share the picture with y'all but there's a my favorite picture from that is and i did it unintentionally as us crossing the finish line and i have both my arms up like yes we did it and how everybody was just happy afterwards i mean it, it's just to me it's it it, it gives me purpose for or it gives me justification for what i'm doing it gives me purpose it gives me drive so good so what sorry what one piece of advice can you give to anybody listening right now that's on the fence about potentially doing any of these races it doesn't matter what race it is who is telling themselves you know i can't i can't i can't i'm not good enough maybe next year like what one piece of advice can you give to that person listening i'm gonna use monty uh he is a 97 year young World War II veteran. He does a beast, a super, and a sprint. Granted, he has two guys walking next to him, but he goes through that whole course and all the obstacles. So if somebody like that or somebody like Sean or somebody like Julio or Marla that is in wheelchairs can do it, they can do it too. I, I don't I care can, if yeah. you weigh 500 pounds i don't care if you are way skinny you can do it just put your mind to it even if it takes you all day to do it that doesn't matter exactly the fact that you finish that's what matters yeah you know do do something hard and it's yeah. possible you just have to make that decision that you're going to do it and then do it whether you train or not whether you walk or run just go. And we're, we're all living proof too, because we've all had our own health struggles or weight issues or mental challenges or addiction. Like all of us have dealt with something. Um, I guess second to last question is, what does free flowing health mean to you? I like to ask every single guest towards the end of the episode, just whatever comes up for you. What's your unique perspective on what free flowing health means? Free flowing health, and uh, I love what you all do of that is do is live right, live the right way. Try to work on your mental, your your food you eat. I myself is not a vegan, but you have made me interested in being a vegan yeah. because I look at all the recipes and stuff you post and say, man, <laughs> that really looks good. <laughs> and Joe's not either, but yeah. Yeah. And I love everything but, you make. But to it's me, amazing. that's... I mean, I love both of you because you are two great humans, according to me. I mean, I didn't have to spend much time with you in Central Florida to know that because I could see it right right off the bat. And that is why you two stand out to me is because you two are trying to make a difference. So to me, free-flowing health is trying to make a difference. Oh, oh I, I love that. Thank you, Henry. And thank you for being here and sharing you know, your story and so much of your insight and I know it's going to be well received. If anybody just wants to stay connected and send you a message or run a race with you, uh, how can they do so? Uh, my Facebook, it's Henry with an I. Uh, my last name is D De Villiers. It's D-E and then a space V-I-L-L-I-E-R-S. <laughs> uh, 
my uh, Instagram is the Viking underscore OCR. And that that's, I mean, anywhere, if you want to race with me, hit me up. I will go with you if you'll want to volunteer with us doing the adaptive athletes. Hit me up. Which, oh my God, I forgot to mention if you want to say a word about uh, more heart than scars or any of the organizations just use this last couple of minutes to highlight the three particular organizations that you're associated with. The, the three that I that's close to me is more heart than scars. We do people that has PTSD, trauma, uh, anything under the sun, mentally, physically, they help, they'll help. And it's a whole team. It's Everybody loves each other. It's a great organization. Then you have Oscar Mike, which does a lot of stuff for veterans because we have to love our veterans too. They gave up so much for us to be here today and have the freedoms and everything we have today. So as a thank you, we need to help them. And then there's also, uh, they have an event coming March 7th, May 17th in Tampa at the stadium, uh, 50 for the Fallen. 50 for the Fallen is kind of like Oscar Mike, um, but they rock a lot. They do like 50 miles for Ooh. for their Fallen comrades. And that is uh, another experience. I haven't done one myself. I am planning on doing one maybe this year in Dallas. Uh, and if I can have time, I will probably go do the, the they call it a, the 24-hour burpee challenge or run mile challenge because you do a mile course and then you have to do 50 burpees and then your teammate tags in. So, I mean, it's a lot of burpees and a lot of shenanigans going on. <laughs> but 50 for the Fallen would be the other, other organization too. And, and there's so many other organizations. There's Ansley's Angels. Um, you know, most VAs have people in there. Uh, there. There's really so many good charity organizations in spot. Um, one of the other ambassadors is with us as Line Art Fitness. Mm -hmm. um, Shell uh, works with kids that, you know, it's not necessarily at risk, but there is, it gives the kids a place to go do these races. And it doesn't cost them anything. They get trained for free. It is, it's, it's also a really good organization to be a part of. Yeah, we're connecting with Shell too. So we're looking forward to having her on and speaking with her about Lionheart Fitness. But we are going to be at Tampa. Obviously, that's going to be our the closest race to us, I think, out of all of them. Are you planning to be at Tampa or? I'm I'm going to try. It, it's just May is such a busy month and it's right before okay. their race. So I kind of have to oh, prioritize wow. where I'm going. Right. Okay. Because, um, you know, living in the northern panhandle of Texas, my closest city is Amarillo and Amarillo is a hub. So I have to fly to either Dallas or Denver to get a flight to go to Florida. So it's very yeah. expensive doing it that way. I see. Well, we're ready to wrangle some swamp puppies next time you're here, because that's hilarious. I, 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 I <laughs> really want to find one and catch one. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can, maybe we could get with somebody that, that can set that up because you do, pro you have to have a permit and, and, or we're not really going to do, do it, that. silly. Hey, I don't know. We, we won't hurt them or anything. We're just going to catch them and yeah. carry them around and oh. you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, guys, this has been really awesome. Um, does anybody have any closing remarks before we, you know, bring this to an end? I would like to share just the last two lines of a poem that is very dear to me. It's Invictus. Don't ask me who wrote it. Just, just Google Invictus poem. He's, he's, is, is Ellen Edgar Poe maybe? I know it's it's something, but they say is, uh, we are the master of our fate. We are the captain of our souls. Mm -hmm. And those two lines have stuck with me my whole life because we are the masters of our faith and we are the captains of our souls. I love that. That is beautiful. That's amazing. Yes. Well, thank you, Henry, for being with us today. We really enjoyed it and really appreciate it. Thank you for all that you've done for everybody else on the course and in life itself. And thank you for you all for what you do and for standing out, like I said, being good people. Yeah. Because this is what this world needs most good people like you. Oh, well, thank you, Henry. And we're going to chat soon and hopefully see you out there on the course. Thank you so much. Yes, we we love you. you. We love you too. <laughs> oh, I mean, I love you too. <laughs> well, your friend back there loves us, I'm sure too. He does. You're right. right. Bye. Just sleeping. 
Thank you so much for tuning in to the Free Flowing Health Podcast. Your support means the world to us. Help us grow by leaving a positive rating and review. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this podcast. If you'd like to stay connected, you can find me on social media at Free Flowing Health or visit my website directly, freeflowinghealth.com. Wishing you a happy, healthy, and fulfilling life. Till the next time. This podcast is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only and should not be considered legal, health, or professional advice. We are not responsible for any losses, damages, or liabilities that may arise from the use of this podcast. This podcast is not intended to replace professional or medical advice. Views and opinions expressed by the guest are those of the guests and do not necessarily reflect the view of the host or the free-flowing health team.